Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? As always, I hope you're doing well. I am great. Look at this beaut of a planter. Beaut, beauty, gem, it's so pretty. Just a square box planter I picked up from Lowe's. It's one of the Allen Roth planters. It has four holes in the bottom. You just poke out with a screwdriver, which I love. You don't have to actually drill through. You just pop them out. Fantastic stuff. Now, if this looks a little bit familiar, it's because Fern Friday will have already been out probably a week prior to this with some ferns in it. And that's because I'm doing things a little bit backwards today. I'm going to plant this up as a foliage planter, mostly with evergreen plants. I wanted something that I can have out year round, which won't be a problem with this planter since it's not a ceramic. I don't have to worry about the cold damaging it. Even though I try to only buy ceramics that are frost proof, you just, you never know. So something that can stay out year round and have an evergreen interest to it. And that's what I'm going for here. So everything I'm going to be using is more semi evergreen. It just kind of depends on our winter here in zone 6B. But uh, I thought I'd go ahead, toss things together and we'll just talk about it. I do have a tropical alternative. It's too late for me to do the tropical planter here now, but we'll talk about it after I'm done planting it up with perennials where I live and go over some options that I think would be stunning in this. If you have some place where you can keep your plants, like tropical plants, that is outside all winter. Okay, yeah, here we go. Be quick, there's only a few plants going in here. have to say, I like how it came out. Now, the plants, of course, a little bit ruffled. This vine up here is kind of scraggly, but that's all right. Everything's gonna fill out and look really nice pretty soon. And talk about easy, right? Just a few plants. There's just three different types of plants in here and should get, hopefully, the goal being 12 months of interest out of this, year round. We will see. Uh, the reason that it's a we will see sort of situation is because everything that's in here is considered semi evergreen where I live. So, time will tell. Gonna start off with talking about the vine that's in here. This vine is a stunning vine, but uh, it's, you know, a little bit ragged. It's the end of the year, so that's to be expected. Would like to eventually get one of those, you know, the four-way trellises to put in here but I, had, I couldn't find one so it's good on the bamboo poles just for now but i do think a more formal type of trellis would look a lot better this is the lacy hearts chinese hydrangea vine pretty zone six through nine they get 10 to 15 feet which is pretty small for a vine which i absolutely love i like that even though that's kind of big for this container but it'll be okay for a little while and they prefer anywhere from part shade to really maybe full sun the tag does say part sun, three to six hours. So I'm gonna go with what the tag says. However, I have had this vine for a couple of months now, waiting to plant it up, and it's gotten an awful lot of sun, like a lot of afternoon sun, in which that probably attributes a little bit to some of the scraggliness of it. It needs a good cut back so it'll flush out with nice fresh growth from below. It, it will hopefully be evergreen here, like I said, time will tell. And given what's really what I love the most about the planter in here, the ferns, you know, this planter's not gonna be getting a ton of sun anyways. I went ahead and they all kind of filled out together, but I put three of the Autumn Brilliance ferns around here. This is the Draptors or Thrasora. Airplane, hi. These Autumn ferns that are in here, that's the Brilliance variety. 
They like part sun to shade though, just like that vine. They've been getting an awful lot of sun here and doing just fine. These are hardy zones four through nine. So they'll get 18 to 24 inches tall with roughly the same width. And then trailing over each of the four corners, I went ahead and put a variegated ivy in. Love the creamy texture and foliage and everything about ivy. Has really nice variegated foliage that's very overexposed and reflective for some reason. There we go. That's a little bit better, kind of darker. Hedera Helix, English Ivy. This is perennial where I live. Should be good zones four through, well, really zones four and up. They can take shade to sun. Gonna have much more full, like lush growth. Leaves will be spaced closer together with the more sun that they get, though the variegated Ivy can scorch with too much light, but won't be a problem because again, this is a planter for shade. And their size is kind of indefinite. It's Ivy. It'll just keep on going. Had I put this planter together earlier in the season, then I actually probably would have trained an Ivy up a trellis in the middle and then had those coming over the sides. I think that would have looked very nice, <laughs> but it's September. I didn't do that. Maybe next year. I don't know. Cause that vine that's in here, this Chinese hydrangea vine, I do have a trellis. I'd like to use this on near my hot tub, but that area is going to be under construction pretty soon. So that's why it didn't end up getting planted over there. <laughs> we'll be keeping this planter someplace where it's going to get roughly, I'd say four to six hours of morning light and then filtered light throughout the rest of the afternoon going to be like pretty dappled and actually probably more dark. It's going on my maple tree. And then when winter approaches and there's no more leaves on the trees, I will of course have to move this because it'll, this will cook in the sun during the winter time. Couldn't go into too much detail here with the autumn fern just because this will have been featured in the previous Fern Friday to this one, but I'll link that down below. I have grown these in containers before during the winter months and they did fine. They stayed evergreen. They lost some foliage when it got really, really, really cold out but it seemed like they were good to about zero degrees, maybe five degrees Fahrenheit before they started dropping their foliage. Even then when that happened, it was like, eh, I don't know, mid-February probably. So it was only like six weeks later and they went ahead and popped right back up and it was beautiful. I do like having ferns in containers. There aren't a ton that are evergreen that can grow where I live. And like I said, this one's kind of semi evergreen. And the other ones that are evergreen are like the holly ferns and things like that, which are beautiful ferns. I really do like them. But the autumn fern, like I said, will have been featured in a separate video. But these autumn ferns, especially the brilliance variety, they're very colorful. They get really lush and full and they have that classic woodland vibe to them, which I mean, it's not <laughs> necessarily how I do things back here, but my gardening style fall and winter pretty different, right? Because I can't keep all these tropicals out here. That's why I like to have some planters around like this that are evergreen, just be, so that there's something to look at outside, even, even if it ends up on my front porch, perhaps. It's just really nice not having everything completely dormant and looking dead six months out of the year. So this is going to help with that a little bit, assuming that the winter is absolutely horrible. Time will tell. I have no idea. Winters have become extremely unpredictable. But that's it. Very simple. Nothing to it. Just a few ivies, few ferns, and then a vine in the middle. There aren't a ton of evergreen vines either, just like the fern. That's, that's, that's why I went ahead and used this one in here. I said it might just be semi-evergreen. We will see. And uh, I'll train that ivy up something in the center next year. It'll look cool. I could even use one of those ball-shaped topiary forms. That'd be neat. Train the ivy up into a little tree. It'll look cool. Okay, that's it. Nothing more to it. I will update when I <laughs> train that vine up and get it like an, a little bit more tidy. I did, however, want to talk about a, an option for people. For one, there are a fair amount of subscribers who are in Australia. So happy almost spring to you guys. Must be nice. And then just anyone who lives someplace with a warmer climate, probably I'd say zones like 9B and up. What I really would have loved to have done with this planter, too late now, so I can't do it. But for here I have a Rex begonia vine, which is not at all a begonia. I'll have that name up there on the screen though. And it was climbing up that trellis and looking gorgeous. And then uh, my dog's tail happened to it. So now it's sitting down there. It's so nice of him. Just in time for me to film a video. Went ahead and knocked the plant over. But that's okay, you still get the idea. Look at how gorgeous the foliage is on the begonia vine. I think that would look stunning in the center of a planter. They have like really cute kind of wispy, uh, creamy pink flowers that come out of them. Mine doesn't have any flowers on it to show off right now. But what I was going to say, to do this begonia vine in the center of the planter with some stromanthes around the sides instead of the ferns. I mean, that foliage would just be stunning. A planter just absolutely full of gorgeous foliage. Not too heavy on the flowers, but that's all right.
his luck. Well, even here, just set that right there. Look, look, see? Oh, that doesn't help. I mean, that's just beautiful. <laughs> it doesn't, I mean, if it were just that, you know? Thought I should go ahead and actually tuck that in with the planters. You can see what I'm talking about, but imagine that with a beautiful shade loving tropical vine in the center and there are like little mini ferns that you could put on the sides oh it'd be so cute and yet yeah, there is a good chance a planter that i've described just now will be happening like this <laughs> several months from now in the springtime for now though i'm focused more on the evergreen interest and aspect of everything and i don't want to take my stromanthes and pot it into this and then unpot it when the frost hits i'd rather just pot it up into something that i can take right into the house as soon as the temperatures start to drop below like eh probably 50 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll do better in the house, well, in my grow room, not that my house, but it'll do better in, when it's already established itself into a pot as opposed to being pulled out and then repotted and the weather and everything changing. Going from outside to inside can be a bit shocking and the stromanthes are not always the easiest things to keep alive in the house, at least not for me. This will probably be different though, because I'm actually gonna have it, like I said, in my grow space instead of just in my house. So that'll probably be just fine in that sort of situation. I think if the Vanda orchids do okay in the grow space, then there's really no reason the Stramanthes wouldn't. Okay, that's all. I just kind of want to play around with this planter a little bit and get it going. So there that is, a nice option for people who live zones six and north, and then something for people who live zones nine and south pretty diverse options there but you know i could only plant up one i kind of was thinking about mocking them both up but i just didn't want to pull the plants in and out wouldn't be great for them especially with this vine here you know the dog's tail already happened to it it already has some recovering to do i didn't want to end up putting it in there and then pulling it back out just for the sake of the video you guys are smart you get what i'm saying it'll be pretty lots of pretty options to do with a planter like this and i know that the whole brown faux wood sort of thing isn't something i normally do out here but like i said my fall and winter ideas are usually very 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 drastically different from my spring and summer the pattern on this reminds me so much of like balinese wood carvings that to me this still has a tropical vibe to it to each his own everything's in the eye of the beholder right even though i didn't go a tropical direction with it all right i think you get the point i'm just playing with planters that i bring you all along hope everybody's doing well i will update things on my instagram all my social media is linked down below i use instagram more than anything else and i really i think this is going to look really cool when that ivy starts to kind of do its thing which might be a while sometimes it sits still for a minute before it gets going and then i'll give that vine a cut back and it should flush out and look a little bit more full down below that'll look better too and if you haven't already and you'd like to give the video a thumbs up i appreciate it. it makes a huge difference for the videos and for the channel so thank you and subscribe as well and hit that notification bell upload multiple times a week and that way you'll know when new videos come out and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye